in this class we will discuss about uh, stiffened and unstiffened elements uh, in the case of uh, cold formed uh, steel sections so because we, when you want to design any steel structure by using cold formed sections you should know about uh, the types of elements which are there in the section so normally you will be having uh, stiffened and stiffened intermediate elements like that so let us understand that by with some examples so here i have taken a, a, a cone form steel section of this shape hat shape you can say here this uh, middle this this portion is, is taken as a stiffened element if you take another section like this here these two are taken as unstiffened elements and in this uh, case this is called as edge stiffened element suppose if this is not provided if this lip is not provided this is called as lip one if this is not provided then this becomes unstiffened if you provide the lip it becomes edge stiffened element and sometimes you may have to go for an intermediate stiffness uh, if this length length of this uh, element is very large yeah, then you can you can provide an intermediate stiffener in this fashion and then the, this element becomes intermediate intermediately stiffened element so that means uh, when you are uh, designing uh, any uh, cold form steel structure any compression element or a bending element that is uh, a column or a beam then you should know uh, what type of element uh, consists of uh, uh, that uh, section because uh, the value of that uh, buckling coefficient is a normal in the case of uh, uh, whether it is a beam element or a column element buckling effect will be there because in this case uh, the thin sections uh, thin uh, rolled sections are uh, used in the case of cold form sections when the section becomes thinner and thinner its uh, buckling load also will reduce that means the effect of buckling uh, it will be more if the section is thinner that is the meaning so whatever may be the type of load whether it is compression load or uh, bending moment so the, the buckling effect is we have to consider in the case of cold form sections now let us see how we can define those types of elements the first one is the stiffened element this is the this is a stiffened element so why it is called stiffened element because it is supported by webs along both its longitudinal edges so this is one edge and this is another edge okay so these two are the edges so it is supported here you can see that these are the web portions so it is supported by the web so the longitudinal edges are supported by the webs both sides that is why it is called as stiffened element that means the buckling effect will not be much in such case then unstiffened element means this is an instance of unstiffened element you can see here uh, that uh, this side this side of the uh, element uh, is not uh, supported by anything that means it is supported along one uh, longitudinal edge so that means this edge along this edge it is supported whereas along this edge it is not supported so only one uh, it is supported along one longitudinal edge only with the other parallel edge free to displace so the other one other side uh, this edge uh, so this is free to uh, displace so this place or free to move we can say so then it is called as an unstiffened element only one side is supported now intermediate stiffened element so this one is an intermediate stiffened element so because very wide thin element which is divided into two or more narrow sub elements so these are the sub elements this one sub element this another sub element these two are connected by a intermediate stiffener then in such a case this entire element is called as intermediately stiffened element so that is the meaning of it you can have one intermediate stiffener or you can have two or more okay so this is uh, uh, how we can define stiffened unstiffened and intermediate stiffened element particularly in the case of a compression member if at all you want to take it as an element as a stiffened element so it should be supported along one at least it should be supported along one longitudinal edge 
by the web and another and along the other by a web or a link or a edge script map. So it, it, it need not be on both the longitudinal and along both the longitudinal edges, it need not be web one. On one side, it should be web one, it should be supported by web one. On the other side, it can be a web or a link or a edge script map. Then we say that in a compression uh, member, uh, the element has a stiffened element. Normally, a thumb, uh, as, as a thumb rule, the depth of the lip, whatever lip is there, so this is the depth of the lip, this one, this is the depth of the lip. This is uh, taken uh, not less than, or at least it should be taken as one fifth of the uh, adjacent plate width. So this is the adjacent plate. So this becomes the plate. So this depth, whatever is there, this should be not less than one fifth of this width. That is the meaning of that. Of course, in the code uh, uh, IS uh, 801, uh, he has specified uh, the values uh, for uh, uh, this uh, depth of web, all those things. So, both the codes you have to use. One is IS uh, 801, another one is IS 811. So, these two code books uh, we have to use. So, this one, of course, it gives about the different value criteria and the design uh, philosophy of that code form script section. The second one, IIS 811, gives the specifications or it gives the uh, properties of the different types of uh, channel, uh, different types of code form sections, just like screen tables. So both the codes we are using for the design of uh, code form uh, steel structures. Now very important aspect in this is the local buckling. So about buckling, you have understood in the case of uh, beam column design also. So buckling will be due to the thin uh, uh, due to thin uh, members. In the case of uh, uh, columns, uh, normally where to build buckle. So you know how to compute the buckling load of a column in sense of materials. Uh, you have studied, it depends on the different end conditions of the column. So the, you can always calculate the buckling load by using either Euler's formula or Rankine's formula. Now uh, let us see what you mean by local buckling of a plate. So normally uh, since the core form sections they are designed or they are formed from thin uh, steel plates. Uh, we have to uh, go apply the concept of uh, buckling of plates. So very thin elements uh, uh, buckle before gating. So now only so the, thick, uh, the thickness reduces, buckling load also reduces. So if the member is very thin, uh, it won't take much load. It starts buckling at the earlier stage itself. That is the concept. So elastic buckling of thin plates. So we are considering uh, thin plates now. So normally in the case of cold form or steel uh, structures, uh, the thickness is 1 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm, at the most it can be 5 mm. So that's why they are treated as thin plates only. The behavior of plates uh, under compression holds good in the case of cold form sections also. Now to understand that elastic buckling of uh, thin plates within elastic limits, uh, um, what we have to do is, so there are two cases here. In the first case, I am taking a plate which is uh, supported on both the edges. You can see here, uh, this also is supported, it. this is also supported. Both the edges are supported, they will be simple, simply supported. And it is subjected to axial compression like this. See, so this plate is subjected to axial compression. I will take B as the width of the plate and T as the thickness of the plate. So in that case, what happens? The critical elastic critical stress because uh, uh, critical uh, stress, of course, it is uh, directly related with the buckling stress. So you can be given by this formula, which is given in uh, yes 801. PCR is the elastic critical stress. That means at the time of uh, buckling, uh, whatever uh, value of stress is there, that is elastic critical stress you can take. That is given by this formula. A into pi square e divided by 12 into 1 minus 2 square into t by d whole square. So you know that t is the thickness, and b is the width of the plate. K is called as local buckling coefficient. Of course, it depends on the end conditions. E is x modulus of steel you have to take here. Pi square is a constant. Mu is the Poisson's ratio of steel. Now, if you substitute the standard values of, of uh, e and uh, mu for steel by taking mu as 0.3 
and E as 205 kN per mm square and 2.05 into 10 power 5 N per mm square and by as 22 by 7 if you substitute and simplify you will get that PCR value here be equal to 185 into 10 power 3 into K into T by the whole square that means this PCR value depends on this K as well as this ratio of thickness to width so that is the meaning as the thickness reduces, you can see here, as the thickness reduces, PCR value also will reduce. As K reduces, PCR value will reduce. So once the stress value reduces, load value also will reduce because uh, that uh, load is nothing but stress multiplied by the effective area of the section. Now here this K value depends on the uh, yeah, support conditions. For example, in the first case, I have written both edges supported. So in that case, the value of K is the highest value, K is equal to 4. The second case, what I have done here is, I have taken a plate which is supported on one edge only and the other edge it is not supported, it is that edge is free to displace or free to move. In that case, if you apply the same axial compressive force, what happens, this side where it is not supported, where it is free to move, it takes the buckling effect like this. So in this case, the buckling coefficient value is 0.425. So 0.425, uh, that means if the buckling coefficient uh, value uh, reduces that. So if the buckling coefficient value is high, then it can take more load. If the buckling uh, coefficient value reduces, then the buckling load capacity also uh, it reduces. So strength capacity of that uh, particular section it reduces. So that means that is why what they do is in the design normally that whatever uh, unstiffened is, un unstiffened element is there, unstiffened means the free edge. Whatever free edges are there, the free edges are provided with a lift. So if you provide lift to the free edge, then it becomes a stiffened element to avoid the displacement. Then there will not be any uh, that uh, it will not uh, displace or uh, it will not become free to move, it becomes uh, supported only, so by providing, just by providing some lip uh, uh, to the unstiffened uh, element or the free edge, uh, you can make it stiffer. So this is how we can, uh, people will make uh, an unstiffened uh, element to a stiffened element. So this is an unstiffened uh, element as you know, uh, it is free to, so it is similar to this type, unstiffened element, but it is not, because it is not supported uh, uh, by the uh, either uh, Side or, or longitudinal edges. So when you provide leaps to this, these two, so like this, then this edge is stiffened. Uh, it, this becomes an edge stiffened element like this, like this, and it can take more load. So stiffened elements they can take uh, uh, more load compared to unstiffened element, or in other words, the buckling uh, load increases the capacity or the strength of that member increases if for a uh, if you make unstiffened element to a stiffened element. So this is how we can explain how an elastic buckling of thin plates can be applied uh, in the analysis and design of uh, cold form steel sections.